last time uh, we were talking about personality, I told you before, here's the plan today. I'm gonna introduce, once, once I finish covering personality, just real quickly, uh, uh, the last part of it, in particular, um, a psychoanalytic approach to personality because Freud's perspective on this uh, and his views shaped uh, the early theorists uh, in the field of personality uh, around you know, the turn of the last century and then in the middle of the last century. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about Freud, uh, but I expect you to have read that and see if you have any questions, because I'm just gonna skim over it pretty quickly. And then we'll start the topic of psychological disorders today, and that's kind of the plan. So, um, so let's, let, let me just have you summarize real quickly or look at this slide. Um, as a brief introduction, most of you are familiar with the name Sigmund Freud. You're probably familiar with at least some details of his life. Um, you know, Freud was a, um, uh, a very uh, influential um, uh, psychoanalyst uh, who actually founded, if you want, that, the psychodynamic perspective, or at least brought it to the fore. He was uh, oftentimes, spent much of his career in Vienna, Austria, um, Jewish, and um, his goal in life was to figure out what's going on in our psyche. And so uh, his theories uh, that he put forward uh, and his ideas about our, our beings primarily revolved around that idea of what the psyche is and um, how that psyche gets constructed and the forces that come into play that uh, that lead to our, our shaping. Give me some words that you associate with Sigmund Freud. Uh, he emphasized unconscious motives, conflicts and processes, and uh, uh, kind of a now failed attempt at something called the psychosocial uh, development of people and stages. But some other words that you associate with Sigmund Freud. Let me see your hands and maybe some words that whenever you hear his name, you associate this with him. Give me some words that come to mind. Come on. Ego. Okay, ego. Sigmoid. <laughs> well, okay. The or the id. How many have ever heard of the id in your readings? Or the ego and the what? And the super ego. Structures of our personality, according to Freud, that had a big, have a big influence on people, in particular their personality. Um, and so, anything else? What else comes to mind when you think of Freud? Any other words, comment, ideas, unconscious? I mean, he was very well known for kind of looking at that which is hidden, the unconscious, the deep part of us that we're not even really aware of, but has an influence on how we look at the world or think about the world or process. So definitely the unconscious. What else? Anything else? Any of you all called somebody anal before? How do you use the, why do you use that word against somebody or for, towards someone? They're anal. What does that mean if they're anal? Not necessarily the most pleasant word, <laughs> but what does it mean if you call them anal? Up, they're, really they're high, kind of strong. What else? Intense. <laughs> intense. What else? If someone is anal, what else are they? A little bit overbearing, maybe? Is that a common word to use? Yeah. Oh, anal. Freud kind of popularized the word and associated it with a certain personality type. What's the personality type? Well, these things, and he thought that is because there were these uh, certain kinds of energy, psychic energies that would get stuck when you were growing as a little kid. And uh, for Freud, somebody who was anal was stuck in the anal stage. <laughs> and that meant that during potty training, something maybe happened to them or, and, and so they became really clean and, and uptight and needing for control and didn't like messiness and, and that word we kind of, used as being stuck in that stage. So there's a lot of ways in which Freud has influenced um, uh, probably culture uh, uh, as much as the field of psychology. His influence has waned a lot in psychology. In fact, uh, it's pretty rare to find um, somebody who would ever call themselves just a Freudian psychologist. I mean, they're still out there, and, uh, but, and, uh, but it's not as common uh, today. Uh, because a lot of his theories, we've kind of used those and, and, and then moved, moved on kind of as a foundation, and then they've been, many of them have not been supported by research. 
Um, so, but that's Freud, and that's, that was his life goal. So just to show you, and, and one thing I want you to look at uh, uh, as we get ready to leave this would be his structure of personality, the id, the ego, and the superego, and if that's all you put down and you wanna go look at your own notes at some point or look in the book, just put down structure of personality and then the three components, the id, the ego, and the superego. Uh, I think this is <clears throat> something that he's kind of known for, uh, how this personality that you have today has been influenced by um, something that you're born with, an id, and he would say that there's a feature in each of us or kind of a, a structure somewhere in us that he called the id that operated on you know, these basic instincts and impulses and drives for pleasure. And so if you had a person or if you know somebody who is always wanting to have fun, always wanting to party, never wanting to go to school, doesn't care about, you know, it's like forget it. I just want, if there's some place to have fun and do and be and enjoy and to get pleasure, Freud would have used the phrase while, uh, and others would have said that they have a very overactive id. And so their personality is dominated by this id that demands and seeks immediate gratification. And uh, you, you see many children develop this way, right? I mean, if you're hanging around little kids and they see something they want, it can be pretty strong and powerful of an impulse so much so that they let everybody know that they're not getting what they want and they want this. And so it's definitely for Freud and others had been present at birth. So you take that concept and then uh, Freud would say that what happens is the world starts to intrude or stop a kid and, from having all this pleasure uh, being met and reality sets in. And that's when the developing uh, child starts to um, have more of what's called an influence of the executive section of their personality, the ego. So the ego comes in and says things like, wait a minute, you know, the world is telling me I can't always get all these sweet candies to eat that I would really, really want. And uh, so I, there has to be some sort of compromise. I have to be able to do my chores or obey or eat dinner before I can get you know, what I want. And so uh, the executive ego, according to Freud, begins to develop. And then eventually, at the end of the day, um, uh, Freud added uh, what he felt was a very important component of our personality, and that's the superego, this kind of ideal or our conscience, that the one that regulates these rules of right and wrong, what, what we should or shouldn't do. And that superego comes in and, and says and does things that to help moderate the power of the id and moderate what uh, might be baser impulses. And so your personality, ready, is all about your id, ego, and superego, and which one's stronger. And that's, that's what Freud said, and, and it, it was a fairly popular theory um, uh, in the early, mid-1900s. Mid people would talk a lot about uh, Freud's theory and view on life and his structures of personality. Um, you know, research hasn't been kind to the id, ego, and superego. It certainly doesn't exist in our brains anywhere, right? We don't find an id in there anywhere. And it, you, you can't find evidence of these things. And so it's kind of waned quite a bit. But it's still important for you to know. Any questions on this? You've heard it before probably and understand it. One, one example of how this would work would be, I guess you could say, um, like if there was a, uh, a time when you could really see your id, ego, and super ego be in the morning when your alarm goes off. Why would that be a good time to see your id, ego, and super ego? What would your id say in the morning? What does your id say when the alarm goes off? It says, yeah, I want, I want to go back to bed, <laughs> right? By the way, if, if in the morning your alarm goes off and you're just saying, I, I, if, let's say you have to get up for this class, which would be sleeping in, but let's suppose <laughs> that you go, oh, I have to go to Dr. Grace's intro to psych class, and it's in the morning and your alarm goes off, your id is the one that says, stay in bed, it feels so good. So how many of you identify with a pretty strong id right now? And that's, yeah, some of you are tired. And some of you have strong ids. And so you say, and by the way, if it was up to your id, your personality would be, how do you manage these three things? And so for a lot of you, you're like, that's a good idea, I'm gonna stay in bed. Well, at that point, according to Freud, what happens is the ego says, well, well you can't just blow off class. 
eh, there's an exam today or whatever. You can't, so the ego is dealing with what? Reality. It's dealing with reality. It's dealing with the, the, the idea and the notion of, well, hold on, you just can't get everything you want. And there's a reality out there. And so that's the ego. You can't just blow it off. So the id will then do what? Oftentimes the id will say, you can't just blow it off. So my, what might your id say next to the ego? You could sleep in class. Some of you have chosen that path. What else might the id say? If you can't just blow off class, instead, you could, you could call, call in sick. That'd work. And what do you think the ego says? Oh, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. That works for me. Because it's just dealing a little bit with, yeah, that gets me off the hook. I call in sick. I get to stay in bed. It feels so good. You kind of, you know, get... And that would be the end of the story, it, but except for what comes up next? Yeah, that's when the superego says what? The superego says, ego says, that's lying and that's wrong. And so now this is all going on in your personality structure. You're going, oh, that's, and then the question is, what do you do? <laughs> right? Do you at that point decide, oh, I can't lie. I can't. That's wrong. I am, and so what you do at that moment would be kind of a gauge as to your id, ego, and superego. Uh, does that make sense? It's kind of how, how he, would, he would talk about the, the battle within and, and, the, and your structure and your personality oftentimes depends upon the way in which you resolve, you know, th kind of conflicts like that and deal with things like pleasure and, and things like that. All right. It's a psych psychoanalytic approach. There's a whole lot more there. I want you to look at things like ego. Um, uh, uh, well, there's def what we call ego defense mechanisms. So look at those. Ego defense mechanisms. Um, and, uh, and there's some other popular ideas that Freud had and some not so popular. So are there any questions in your readings, things like that, about any of this material or something you read that you want to kind of ask? And if not, we're going to... I'm going to transition right into a new topic. If not, any questions? All right. All right, so that's, that's the idea of personality. Psychologists look at it from a variety of perspectives. This is one, historically, that's been fairly popular of an approach uh, that has, again, waned. The trait perspective we talked about is fairly popular and continues to have uh, a lot of work there. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.